guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about CAC. Is it worth it uh, for your coins? Which coins should you potentially send to CAC? Um, and show you a few coins that we're sending in. So let's get this video started and stay tuned. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you, a collector, can apply for CAC. Um, and CAC basically is those green stickers or gold stickers that you see on the outside of coins, just like this example here. Um, but when you uh, go to fill out a form from them, you just have to reach out, ask for um, a collector application. It's going to look a little bit something like this um, when you take a look at it. You know, name, address, phone, email, uh, A&A &A member, uh, number, um, how many years you've been collecting, which is, you know, all, all pretty easy to answer. Uh, the biggest thing that I would say is numismatic references around here. Um, do you have dealers that you work with that are reputable, um, that they can reach out to that are CAC members? Um, just, just people in the business that say that you're good to uh, send coins to CAC, just some people so they know who you are. Um, uh, all this though is pretty easy, like I said, to fill out. Um, and once you send this off uh, to them, you're automatically in the process of becoming a member of CAC. Um, you know, and most people do get through. It just depends on you know if all those numismatic references check out. Um, and then uh, that actually happened for us a few months ago, though. So um, it's been a good experience so far. We sent out one CAC submission earlier uh, or late last year, um, and this is our second one. So let's take you guys over here, show you a few coins, and also give you uh, the next step in the CAC process. And a little bit of backstory about CAC. It was started by John Albanese. Um, he's a really really good grader um, and he also started PCGS and NGC and those are the only coins that he really evaluates uh, mainly older stuff no modern stuff um, but what, what I wanted to talk about with CAC and why is it important um, and how would you know if your coin is CAC worthy or not um, basically what John Albanese does is he looks beyond the holder um, and he actually looks at the quality of the coin so when you're actually looking at like say MS63 Morgan dollar um, it really it really depends and it is a variety of issues that might happen with the coin um, during that process to make it a min state 63 coin but John Albanese kind of looks at that top 10% um, of the MS 63s and those really receive uh, a CAC sticker basically they're saying they're really good for the grade um, and there's something that most collectors want to aim for if they're buying an MS 63 Morgan dollar where you would see uh, a green CAC sticker on a coin, but there also are gold CAC stickers, which are pretty hard to get, um, just because when John Albanese looks at these coins, uh, basically what a gold CAC sticker means is that, say you have an MS63 Morgan dollar, um, it exceeds the grade, which basically means it's um, a top 10% of an MS64 grade, if that makes sense. And a gold CAC sticker basically means it exceeds uh, the grade that it's in currently, and it's the top 10% percentile of the next grade. So say your coin's in an MS63 grade, but John Albanese thinks that it's exceeded that, um, and it is you know, good enough to get a green CAC sticker in an MS64 grade, that is where he would warrant a gold CAC. And to give you guys a practical example, um, if CAC is worth it for your high dollar coins, I had a friend ask me about um, a Barber Quarter recently. It's graded MS66 Plus by PCGS. I think the coin was being offered to him at $1,100, $1,150. Um, he was trying to ask me if the coin uh, you know, was able to be sold at a profit. And so when I actually checked the comps on PCGS CoinFAX, I saw that coins were selling for $1,600, $1,700, $1,750. Um, and I was like, man, it looks like you can make a profit. But then when I actually took a look at those auction records, most of those coins were CAC approved. Um, the coin that he was trying to pick up from somebody to sell at a profit, it wasn't CAC approved. And most of those coins were selling anywhere between $1,000 um, and $1,200. So make sure to check um, on comps with CAC stickers and comps without CAC stickers because uh, when you do that, you can actually tell what you should list your coin for and if it's worth buying a coin at a certain price that isn't CAC approved. But I hope that helps you guys. Um, we can give more examples in the future if needed. Just let us know. So CAC sticker and why it's important is because it's so deep rooted in collector coins that people really want a, a sticker on their coins, you know, if they are buying a bigger piece. Like 
uh, you know, a really expensive gold piece, really expensive old US coin. They want a CAC sticker on the coin because it basically means that coin is cream of the crop for the series. Um, and so those end up getting the highest comps, those end up getting the best auction records. Um, everything under the sun is what you would expect when you get a CDC sticker on a coin. So that's why many of the dealers use it. Um, and that's why many of the collectors, uh, you know, it's really sought after because John Albanese knows what he's doing. And many of the people recognize that and put their money where their mouth is and spend the money um, to buy those bigger coins with those stickers. And once you become a collector or a dealer member to CEC, you can start submitting coins to them. Um, and we actually just filled out a form yesterday and we're going to show you the, that right now. Um, and when Casey takes a look here, basically, you know, you're going to fill out coins, uh, you know, in different orders here. You can see by the coin date, the coin mint mark, the denomination. Uh, the MS or, or, or is it a proof? Uh, what grade is it, it currently at? Um, the service level, which basically means is it NGC or PCGS? And as you can see right here, most of these coins are going to be from PCGS. One's going to be from NGC. Um, and then you have a kind of declared value like you have at uh, PCGS. You know, how much do you have in the coin? How much do you think it's worth? Um, and then you have the certification number down here. So basically, if the coin does CAC, it's in their system. Um, and you know basically someone else can look it up once the coin is approved um, and then when you tally all this up at the bottom um, you can see where you what, what you should insure um, you know a package for what they'll insure it for you sign your signature here and your date um, and basically there's only like a two-week turnaround for stuff like this um, they're pretty quick very efficient um, the tier that we actually use just because there's not too many expensive coins as you can see in this lot uh, we use regular tier submission which basically means it's $16 per coin if it stickers. And if it doesn't sticker, um, they don't charge you anything. So that's something that you should recognize as well. And when you're actually sending coins in to CAC and they don't CAC, um, they'll actually add that balance back to your account. Um, you, you see right here, they're telling us to write a check for $218. Um, you know, return shipping charges, handling fees, um, and price per coin. Um, but like I said, if they don't sticker, they'll award that balance back to our account um, and we can use that for our next CAC submission. So this right here is our order. Um, we have 12 coins in total, a lot of nice pieces here. Um, as you guys have known, if you follow our Instagram, I've started an Ike set recently. Very happy about that. Uh, let me pick up a few of them, show them to you. Uh, up first, I want to show you guys this beautiful 1974S. Um, so it basically it's a silver Ike dollar rated MS67 by PCGS. It's in a nice Rattler holder, a little bit harder to find. Uh, and basically the reason why I'm setting this coin uh, in is because it has pretty problem free surfaces. There's a light scuff, um, a little touch on uh, the obverse, um, just a stellar coin. There's no uh, issues with PVC or anything like that like they had back then. Um, I love the coin as well. And then when I flip over the coin, um, the reverse is just problem free, like there's nothing wrong with it. Um, the luster is pretty nice as well, there's no spots, there's nothing that would take away from the coin. So I'm justifying it in my mind as you see, and you'll see with many of these other coins. Um, I'm trying to justify, is it worth sending in? It's worth sending in, I'm trying to tell myself over and over again, and then we'll see what happens. It might cack, it might not cack. The next Ike dollar we want to show you guys is this beautiful 1971 Denver uh, MS65. Uh, yeah. This coin's awesome, and the reason why I like it is because the luster on the coin is very nice for an Ike dollar. Uh, the, the surfaces are a little choppy, have little issues, um, but I think it might have a chance at receiving a CAC sticker. Uh, these were graded a little bit more strictly back then. Uh, not many were actually graded. Uh, I like the obverse a lot, like I said, because of that luster. Um, it has a few scuffs to the, in front of the face there, which is a little bit of an issue. A little bit of chatter behind it as well. Uh, but when I flip over the coin, um, you can kind of see the same story, a little bit of uh, outliers on uh, the, the rim area, a little bit of scuffs, but overall a nice coin for an MS65 grade. I think uh, you know nowadays this coin might be an MS66, maybe a little bit higher than that, but hopefully John Albanese agrees with me. Hey guys, we want to take a break in this video uh, to let you guys know we have a lot of nice coins on our website, AkushaCollectibles.com. We'll have that link below for you, but uh, we hope you guys are enjoying everything so far. Please leave a like, uh, comment what coin you think from your collection would cap. Just give a general description down in the comment section below. 
uh, and subscribe if you're new. We come out with videos every single week trying to inform you and trying to uh, make sure you have a good time in the coin space by showing off some pretty interesting coins. But let's get back to today's episode. Up next, we're going to show you guys this awesome California commemorative uh, 1925S. Uh, it, it's created MS62. Uh, the reason why I like this coin so much is because it has some nice subtle toning on the obverse. Um, it has a spot uh, right underneath the Y which kind of takes away from the coin. Um, and I, I hope he cacks it but we'll see how it goes. And when you flip over the coin, um, it has some nice color on there as well. Um, the piece is nice and original. Uh, just enjoy the Rattler, um, California. Don't see too many of this off very often so uh, when I do run into something like this, I'm going to try to cack it. The coin I want to show you guys next is this really nice 1881S Morgan Dollar, graded MS65 by PCGS. The reason why I like this coin so much is because it has really nice luster, like the 81S's normally do. Um, pretty strong strike, but as you can tell in the obverse, very nice color. Um, it's, it almost came out of like an it was came out of like an interesting bag. There's some coins that tone a certain way, and some coins that tone a different way. Um, this coin kind of toned blue and and purple and green, so. Pretty interesting coin, but when you flip it over, uh, it has a really nice blast white finish. Nothing too distracting in the fields. Um, you know, a really nice MS65 in my opinion, but we'll see how he says. This is a pretty interesting coin. We just got this coin back from PCGS. Um, luster bomb, colors, I mean everything on this coin is amazing. Uh, when you start to rotate in the light, um, you can just see the so many, so many things about this coin that make it really nice. Um, the, like I said, the luster, the problem-free surfaces, um, and you know it's reverse mounted as well. But when you flip over the coin, um, the luster is really nice on the reverse. You know it is 1881s, um, but there are uh, you know a significant amount of chatter in the fields. But we'll see how they think of what they think about it. I really like the coin. I really do hope it cacks. One of my favorite coins of the submission is this 1963 Franklin half dollar uh, graded AU58 plus by PCGS. Um, you know, the color on the uh, reverse is really nice. You can see like, kind of like this cat eye um, color on it. This coin actually did CAC before in an AU58 holder, but this coin is now an AU58 plus holder, a part of an everyman set kind of thing. Um, so we really want to get this coin CAC'd um, just so it's, you know, it has that potential to reach its high, highest kind of auction when it does go there. Um, you know, and people really do enjoy the Cax Durker, so that's why we, we want to get it on this coin. The next coin I want to show you guys, which you've seen a few times, uh, we're going to leave a link for our Buffalo video if you ever want to take a look at all the Buffaloes that we've been putting back from my collection. Um, but this is a nice 1929S Buffalo Nickel in a nice OGH holder. Uh, the reason why I think this coin would cack is because um, it is a pretty decent strike, has pretty nice luster, um, has nice color on it as well. Um, just not too many issues with the coin on the obverse. Um, and when you flip it over, it has some nice color on the reverse as well. You're kind of seeing that orange blue, um, you know, maybe a hint of green. But like I said, I think all the when it, everything comes together, I think this coin is at the top tier of a 63, possibly even a 64 braid. We bought this coin uh, a few videos back as well, but we wanted to show it to you guys again just because of how much we like it. This is an 1837 seated dime with no stars um, graded. Uh, BF25 by PCGS. The reason why we like this coin so much is because it is a circulated coin that has a lot of originality and it's a pretty tough coin to find in higher grades. Um, and when you take a look at the obverse here, you do see a dot to the left of her, which, uh, you know, it's like a, a coin roll or something happened to it. Um, but other than that, there's just a really nice problem for you open surface there. Um, and when you flip it over, uh, I don't see any distracting marks, any distracting dots. Um, the luster's pretty still. Uh, imminent on the coin um, and I like the dark richness that it has as well so I think this coin has a really nice shot um, it's we're trying to understand more and more about CAC so uh, we'll make sure to keep you updated on this coin when it returns home here's another coin that you guys will be seeing in our PCGS uh, unboxing on Friday of this week um, this is an 1882 Morgan dollar grade MS65 by PCGS pretty big money coin um, as you can see I think price got on this coin $650, just blast white. Um, but when you take a look at the obverse, the color is very nice. This coin might have gotten a color bump, which basically means um, PCGS gives like a half a grade bump sometimes to a coin when it has exceptional color. Um, and so when I take a look at the obverse here, the color is pretty nice, pops out. Um, but when you flip over the coin, 
you can kind of see uh, some scuffs on the face, uh, some scuffs in front of the coin, in front of her head as well, almost like really light and long scratches. Um, so that's kind of where I'm seeing this coin going. I'm not sure he would uh, see, see this coin, but since it's such a high dollar coin, it's worth a shot because if it does CAC, um, it's going to be one of those really uh, expensive type of coins to buy rather than a coin that's not CAC'd. And the last coin of the video, um, we showed you guys a lot of nice stuff. And this is kind of like a little tester coin that we're sending in. Uh, this is a 1941S Mercury dime sitting in an old uh, fatty holder. Um, it's great MS62 by NGC. And the reason why we're sending this coin in is because we hope it can get a gold cack. Um, there are a few uh, scratches on the obverse here, but the luster is still pretty nice. Um, and when you flip over the coin, um, you can still see that remaining luster there. Um, and it almost looks like it's uh, a full band coin. So um, I like the coin a lot. I hope uh, John Albanese uh, kind of agrees with me and we get a gold cack sticker. That would be nice. It'd be our first one ever. So we'll make sure to keep you updated on this one as well. So to wrap everything up in this video, we wanted to talk to you guys about what CAC means, um, offer you guys some information about CAC, um, is it worth it for you to uh, you know, send coins to CAC, and for the most part I would say yes. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this part of the video and enjoyed the information that we gave. If you guys did, please leave a like, uh, comment your thoughts down below what you think of the coins, what do you think of the CAC process, and subscribe if you're new. We'll see you guys in the next video.